This is chapter 7, Dimensional Analysis, Similitude and Modeling. So, the motivation for dimensional analysis is to reduce the number of variables that are involved in an experiment or in any physical um, situation. So, by reducing the number of variables, so what we are going to do is to group some of the variables into new variables. These new variables are going to be called pi numbers. And uh, um, the way of tell how many of these new pi numbers are going to need, it is going to be related with the Buckingham pi theorem. So after we know how many variables we have to compute, so we have uh, different techniques to compute um, these pi terms. So we are going to cover uh, two terms, two forms of uh, determining how to compute these pi terms. In this lecture, probably we are going to cover only one. Okay, so the motivation. So let's uh, consider this experiment in which uh, we have a cyclist that goes around a track that is drawn by a circle of radio R with constant speed V. So it is observed that the cyclist naturally tilts by an angle A. So we have this angle and uh, it is necessary if the cyclist wants to keep the velocity uh, by turning. So, but what happened when um, uh, it changed the velocity or it changed the radius? So, what will be the angle? So, what we want to find from these experiments is a functional relationship even between the angle, angle. So, the angle is going to be the dependent variable, and the independent variables are going to be the radius and the velocity. So, these are the independent variables. So <clears throat> we will have to do some experiments um, but in the case of these two variables how do we proceed? So probably the best way is to have uh, one radius constant and um, just uh, vary the velocity and measure the angle. So we can actually plot so if we have uh, velocity in this axis and the angle in the other one so we can probably ask the cyclist to go to certain velocity and so we can measure the angle so we can have a kind of curve and that will be like to say r1 equal to a constant but uh, because the angle will probably change with r so we will have to repeat the experiment with a different angle and let's say that um, um, the um, radius is going to be like larger so probably the angle is going to be less so we for the same velocities we can have different angles so this is r2 and we can do it for different angles so the question is how many of this test of this observation do we have to do so let's say that if n is the number of observations so this is the number of observations at given um, r so and we are going to probably test for m different radius so the total observations are going to be n multiplied by m and if we decide that uh, the number of because we cannot decide which one it should be uh, higher n or m so we just decide that n equal to m is a good way of doing it so if m x equal to n so the total number of observation it will be n square so for two variables it will be n square if we have three variables it will be um, n cube and in general will be n to the number of variables so this is equal to the number of total observations or test so if 
in this example we decide that uh, we are going to have n equal to 10 so if n is equal to 10 so 10 is square it is going to be equal to 100 so this cyclist will have to do not just 100 turns but 100 very well like controlled turns so it is um, it is a large number it's going to take some time so depending on the radius it will be something that you cannot do in just a couple of minutes so how can we reduce the number of variables so we can do less tests okay so the answer is combine the variables to form dimensional dimi dimensional list variables so what we want to do so we want to have our initial relationship it is a is equal to a function of r and v and we want to transform this relationship into another one and i'm going to select here also uh, the angle and we are going to have another function of v square over gr so i just choose this one variable so this is one variable <clears throat> and the original one which was the uh, angle so initially we have two independents and uh, the angle so initially the variables were a r and v and in our second situations we are going to have a and v square over gr so with these two variables the second one i'm just write it down so you know where we got this uh, this one i'll show uh, later how to do it so we reduce the problem from three to two so that means that we can actually plot <clears throat> and with a single set of tests so for some velocities measure the angle and um but in in this case we are not going to plot just the, ve the velocities but is v square over gr so it has combined two variables velocity and radius and there is a new one which is the gravity but the thing that i want to highlight here it is that we reduce from n square to n test so that means in, in our case n is equal to 10 test 10 observations so that's a lot of reduction okay let's for a second analyze our variable so we have our variable v square over gr and um, I want to show that uh, what are the dimensions of this. So I'm going to introduce a term which is an equal sign with a dot on top. And this is uh, pronounced the dimensions of r equal to. So in this case, the dimensions of v square over g r are equal to. And then I have to write the dimensions. So the dimensions of velocity are going to be L over time square the dimensions of gravity of 1 over gravity so it is going to be acceleration so l divided by time square so the time i'm going to write it on the numerator and multiplied by 1 over the radius so we have 1 over l okay let's see what are the dimensions of this so we have L square in this term and on the denominator we have L and L so we have time and we have in the denominator and this is time square and we have time square in the denominator so that's going to be the cancel so the dimensions of this particular are going to be L to the zero and T to the zero so that means dimensionless so i'm going to write dimensionless as a dash in between a square bracket okay let's continue so in general so this is from chapter one so we have uh, the two different system the mlt system and the flt system uh, in which the difference in between the 
Two, it is that um, in one we express in terms of mass, and in the second one we express in terms of force. And so remember the relationship in between mass and force, it is that uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So mass times L, T to the negative two. So this is the force, okay? So we can express any possible variable, like for example, force, we just did. Uh, area is L squared. Let's choose um, velocity, L T to the negative one. Uh, more interesting one, dynamic viscosity. So M L to the negative one, T to the negative one. Superficial tension, which is um, a force per unit length. So it is just in terms of um, uh, dimensional uh, quantities is M T to the negative two and so forth. So the only one that I include here with temperature is the thermal conductivity, so which is ML theta to the negative one, T to the negative two. Okay, <clears throat> so you should be able to express any uh, variable in terms of the dimensional variables. So in the exam we probably will have some, um, some table, so you should remember this. Okay, <clears throat> let's have an example of the drag force over a body. So for the um, body, I'm going to select just a sphere. So let's see that we have a sphere. And this sphere has some uh, diameter and I'm going to call it L. And so we have a fluid that goes, that comes from the left hand side to the right hand side. So this is going to be an stagnation point and one fluid particle below will go under and one particle above will go over and until some of the very far away they are not going to be altered so <clears throat> in this experiment so we have uh, some variables so the velocity like far away it is going to be the velocity is going to be uh, v and this fluid will probably have some characteristics so like some density and some viscosity so the functional relationship for the force so this fluid it is heating the ball the sphere and so the force that is the fluid exert on the um, sphere is going to be a function of l v rho and mu so we have five variables one two three four five variables and we have four independent variables so how many experiments do we have to do how many tests <clears throat> so that will be n to the fourth so that's the number of independent variables. So n to the four observations. We have to do. So we are going to transform this problem into a dimensionless problem. And so the first variable is going to be called CF. And this is going to be a function of, but this is a different function, so I call it uh, phi. Another variable, and is, this one is going to be called Reynolds. So we have two new variables. So CF, the force coefficient, and the Reynolds. So we reduce from five to two variables. So now we have two variables. And we have one independent variable. So in total, we are going to have n to the one observations. So that's a lot of reduction in the number of observations. So we are basically moving, if we decide that n is equal to 10, so we are going to move from 10,000 to that's huge reduction of effort so only 10 observations 
<clears throat> okay, so just to highlight that um, we go to these variables for some dimensionless technique, but there is a physical meaning in these variables. So that's another interesting thing of uh, dimension and analysis. Like for example, so we call the CF, this is um, the drag um, coefficient of the force coefficient. And this force coefficient is defined, CF is going to be defined as F divided by one half of rho V square. So the first thing to notice is that force, it was our dependent variable and our new dependent variable, it has the force inside. So it has the force in there. So it represents uh, like a mirror of the um, original expression. Okay, so we have in the denominator the force, so underneath, so we have to have um, a real, uh, an equivalent um, unit, an equivalent uh, quantity, so the one underneath should probably be a uh, force. So but we have this term, one half of rho v squared. So if we remember from our Bernoulli equation, so this was an stagnation point stagnation point and for this stagnation point we have that the pressure at this point <coughs> it was equal um, to the sum of two different pressures one was the actual pressure at one point over here from the fluid so that would be let's say that this is point one so that would be one part that is formed by the pressure and the second part which is formed by the, um, the dynamic pressure and the dynamic pressure was uh, rho v square over 2 so this was the static pressure and this term was um, the dynamic pressure So the term, the numerator, the denominator in the force coefficient, it is actually the dynamic pressure. So it is a relationship in between the force and the dynamic pressure of the fluid. Okay, on the second hand, we have Reynolds. So Reynolds number, it is going to be defined for this case as rho velocity length divided by mu and is going to have a relationship in between forces also but the two forces that are involved in this case are in the first case this rho represent like the mass multiplied by the velocity so this is like momentum so this is momentum or inertial forces And in the denominator, we have mu, which is the viscosity. So we are going to have friction forces. So it is going to be like a relationship in between the inertial and friction forces. So if Reynolds is high, it will mean that the inertial forces are more important than friction forces. Okay, so this illustrates um, in a simple case how we reduce the number of variables and these variables have an actual physical meaning okay so how do we compute these um, variables the first thing is how many variables are going to be okay so this is um, this information is gathered or is expressed by the Buckingham Pi theorem so if an equation involving k variables is dimensionally homogeneous so it has to be like a, a decent equation in which all the terms have the same dimension otherwise it's not even um, a, a valid equation from the physical point of view we have, remember we have to all the terms if in an equation they have to have the same dimension okay so we have an expression 
So that expression can be reduced to a relationship in among k minus r independent dimensionless products. So k minus r, we still don't know what is r, are going to be the number of new variables. And r is the minimum number of reference dimensions required to describe the variables. So let's have a look to r. So they say is reference dimensions. So what are the reference dimensions? So reference dimensions, so we have M, L, T, and theta, or in, in the MLT system, and F, L, T, theta. So we have to look how many of these reference dimensions do we have. If we have mass and length only, so it is going to be R is going to be 2. But if we have um, M, L, and T, that's going to be 3. So R, we just have to decompose all the all the variables and see how many of these reference dimensions are and so k which is the number of original variables we subtract r and then we have the number of new variables okay let's write this down so we have u1 some variable a function of u2 u3 until uk so we have k variables and then we have um, we decompose each one of these u1, u2 and u3 and we realize that we have r uh, reference dimensions reference dimensions So our new expression is going to be pi 1 equal to another function, a different function. We don't know what is the new function, phi, as a function of pi 2, pi 3, and the last one will be pi k minus r. That's the number of new k minus r pi variables. So for example, as in the example before, we have f, l, b, rho, and mu. Let's decompose them. So we have, let's make this table. So we have f, so f it is mass times acceleration, then we have length, which is well, the diameter, which is L, the velocity, which is length divided by time, density, which is mass divided by volume, L cubed, and viscosity, which is mass divided by L and T. So how many variables do we have? We have M, M, M. We have L, 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 L. We have and L and we have time and we have time we have time time and time okay so we have in three so the number of variables is one two three four five so k it is equal to five and r it is going to be equal to three so k minus r it is five minus three equal to two so we have two new dimensionless variables. So we are going to have pi 1 and pi 2, as we show in the example before. Okay, let's have a look. How can we determine the variables? 